Antoine Hubert, thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure to have you on our Newsmaker series. Pleasure is mine. And you are CEO and member of the board for Avis Victoria. And in preparation for this interview, you know, along with the news headlines of your latest acquisition, which just happened in January, I also was intrigued by the fact that there was a lot about your description of your person in terms of being someone that is very outspoken and who, you know, doesn't hold back and is not afraid to ruffle feathers. Has that been an asset for you? Not always. <laughs> so, <laughs> sometimes it's, uh, it's also a disadvantage. But I think in the end, when you're an entrepreneur, you have to, to speak out and uh, to tell what you think. Mm -hmm. That's the way uh, entrepreneurship works. This is what you would tell budding yeah. entrepreneurs. Don't hold back. Yeah, exactly. But uh, as for Elon Musk, uh, sometimes it backfires. Yes. It happens. You've had your moments where yeah, I had. <laughs> it's been better. OK, so then let's jump into this latest acquisition that we just mentioned. Um, Swiss Medical Networks, of which Avis Victoria is the parent company, just took in Rosen Clinic in Raffertsville. Yeah. Yes. Rappersville, which is in Canton saint gall but it's uh, really interesting because it's at the corner of uh, Schwitz and uh, Zurich, so there is a lot of uh, uh, population around this uh, this point, and uh, uh, that will fit in the Zurich region together with our two other clinics, so Lindbergh and uh, Betanien. And this keeps you on track for your goal of having the goal you set back in 2016 about having 20 to 25 clinics in the fold? Yeah, this goal, we, we set this goal already earlier in 2006. So oh. the idea was to have a Swiss-wide uh, network of uh, hospital, mm -hmm. uh, because in Switzerland you have not many mm -hmm. uh, national players, so only Slanen and us. So the idea was really to cover most of the geography uh, in Switzerland. So. 20 to 25, that's, uh, I think, the right number to be all around Switzerland. And now, now with this acquisition, you're up to 17, 17, yeah, yeah. Okay. You mentioned earlier Hirsland, and, you know, it, is that a little bit a thorn in your side? Because it's, it's always Hirsland first, and then Avis Victoria. Or does this keep you motivated? No, I mean, they start uh, much earlier. So Hirsland is a long story, uh, and they build up this, uh, this group uh, maybe 20 years before uh, Swiss Medical Network, so they had a head start. Uh, 20 years um, I think uh, we both are a um, um, healthcare company in Switzerland providing private cares. We have different style, but we are pretty much complementary. And maybe one day we'll merge. Oh. That would be interesting. Is that even in the talks? Is that even no. a discussion? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. But uh, no, no, not at all. But in Switzerland, it happens sometimes that big players have to merge, like the banks have merged in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, so it's the only way to move forward and survive, perhaps. You know, Switzerland is a, uh, quite small country, uh, and so uh, uh, 26 uh, different administration, and you have to deal with that, so it's uh, really expensive to live in Switzerland as a corporate, because mm -hmm. you have to, uh, you cannot centralize so much in Switzerland, mm -hmm. so that's why sometimes you have to merge. Mm. So it's not out of the cards, not out of the question. Help, walk me through this. So you have 17 clinics, Hirschlanden has 18, however, their revenue, their turnover, is three times as much as Avis Victoria. Why this gap? So, they, first of all, they have a huge clinic in Zurich, the Clinic Island, and so the mothership is mm -hmm. producing around 600 million. So, that's a, a huge hospital. Okay. Uh, then also in Bern, they are really uh, they're very important with uh, three hospitals there in Bern. Mm -hmm. Um, and then other, well, the other hospitals are pretty much comparable in size. So what makes the difference is really Bern and Zurich. But what makes the difference for you? I mean, where, 
they, okay, so they have these very strong clinics that are making a lot of money, but where else could you be bringing in no, I think more revenue? It's, it's, or? I, I think Zurich, uh, uh, Iceland, as they established this strong position through the year uh, in, in, in Zurich uh, since 100 years, so Iceland is 100 years old. Uh, so we will never be so strong in Zurich. So in Zurich, we have a mm. battalion, which is uh, small, but uh, it's a kind of niche uh, for really private care. Right. Uh, we're not on the hospital list like Iceland, and so only people with supplementary insurance can come uh, in battalion. Okay. That makes us quite uh, unique in, in Zurich. And also, uh, we have a very strict, uh, what we call in German, Belegeert system, that, uh, that means that our doctors are all independent. Okay. And that's very important, I think. Uh, Why? Because uh, this profession, like lawyer, they call a profession liberal. Uh, it's a liberal profession, so mm -hmm. they have to uh, let them free to choose the right treatment and to... Uh, you cannot incorporate the doctor uh, within the organization. They have to be a kind of a parallel organization. Who is your... You mentioned earlier, who are your clients? Who are the Avis Victoria clientele? I mean, Swiss Medical Network client, first client are the doctors. Uh, they are independent and they are coming in our facility with their clients. So we are in a kind of B2B to C business. Okay. Uh, so if we want to grow our business, we have to convince more doctor, more uh, surgeon to come in our hospital to work. And is this difficult to convince them? Uh, it depends. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends on the time. It depends. Uh, uh, here in Zurich now, there is a lot of pressure. Uh, in Iceland on the doctor, so we have a, a trend, a flow uh, of doctor coming from Iceland to us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they feel some pressure there. Pressure uh, in terms of what? Pressure in terms of um, cost, uh, investment. You probably or, or not, uh, they're not on salary, but they're some what they're are, making. Th that's that's the money. difference in Iceland, and they have hired some doctors, so mm -hmm. there is an internal competition uh -huh. between the. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, the employee's doctor and the, um, the, the, the other physician. So it deepened the region. In, in the French part, there is more uh, unsatisfaction by the public hospital. So we have a lot of doctors coming from uh, hospitality, uh, yeah. university hospital in, in Geneva or in Lausanne. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is not the case here in Zurich. The doctor working at Unispital are pretty happy with the, their situation. So it's, uh, we're in Switzerland, so each situation is different. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> as, you have, uh, have you, as you have mentioned on more than one occasion, it's like having 26 different health ministers. <laughs> and it's, we, actually, we actually have 26 different health ministers in Switzerland. Yes. We have to deal them, yeah. uh, with them. But, uh, and, and some are really independent from the hospital, so they are just health minister, uh, minister and they consider the, the canton hospital as one of the players. Mm -hmm. But in some canton, they are the head of the canton hospital. So they are not only yeah. uh, the one making the rules, but is also operating your biggest competitor. So, not really fair, but we mm. we deal with. It's a complicated scenario. I mean, strong competition, but as you said, quite fragmented. Um, what do you think it would look like three years from now? I don't know what it will look like three years for, for, from now, but uh, maybe ten years from now. Uh, I think we have to evolve um, into a more integrated system. So um, for now, we have in, in Switzerland, you have the insurance, you have the state owning, owning the hospital, you have uh, uh, some independent hospital and clinic, then you have the doctors, then you have some group of uh, medical center, like mm -hmm. uh, Migro has with MedBase. Mm -hmm. I think few of these players have to come together to provide an integrated 
healthcare system like uh, Kaiser Permanente in the US. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only uh, long-term sustainable system. Okay, well, to that point, um, you've also been described as the man from Valais who wants to revolutionize the health sector. Do you agree? Is this the goal? I agree I'm coming from Valais, of <laughs> course. <laughs> but, um, A revolutionary? Yes. I, I, I want to transform. I want to transform the system. Uh, might not be a revolution, but an evolution. Uh, because right now the problem is that you have the insurance uh, on the one hand. Insurance is interested in you as, as, as long as you're healthy. Yeah. But the idea... The, the ideal uh, patient for the insurance is the one who died from a cardiac uh, arrest uh, at 50. So no cost, and that's a uh, full benefit for the insurance. And for us, as a provider, we hope that the patient will last the longer mm -hmm. as possible. So how do you uh, do this? And, and so uh, those interests are not aligned. So by doing an integrated care a system mm -hmm. like Kaiser Permanent, mm -hmm. which is at the same time, the insurer and the provider, that right. means the, 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 the patient becomes a, a member of kind of club providing healthcare. Right. It means you but better keep your member healthy mm -hmm. instead of treating him. So you're not anymore in a fee-for-service system, but you're in a system where you take care of your people. Yes, yes, I, HMOs and this conversation, exactly. is, yeah. um, which is a, a, a very, also a very uh, discussed topic in the U.S. But the idea then would be also to put, uh, to bring all the private clinics under one roof. Is this also... To, to, to put uh, hospital uh, and clinic under one roof and also medical center uh, under the same roof and to be also able to offer healthcare plans. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And you're an entrepreneur, so you also want to make some money. <laughs> you're also a businessman. I mean, you have to make money if you want your enterprise to thrive and, and, and be sustainable long term. So the idea of the non-for-profit that we have in Switzerland mm -hmm. is that to have to work for free mm -hmm. uh, is not the same as the non-for-profit in the US. In the US, non-for-profit means you make profit, mm -hmm. but you are not distributing this profit uh, to shareholders because mm -hmm. you have a form of uh, foundation or I don't mm -hmm. know what. A foundation, yeah. So uh, I think even a non-for-profit organization has to make profit if, if you want to be able to reinvest to to maintain all the, 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 the equipment. Mm -hmm. So in healthcare, it's very important because um, the technical equipment of a, a, re, a really high rate of obsolescence, mm -hmm. uh, typical cycle is maybe five years, so yeah. you have to amortize in five years. So you have to make money if you want to be able to reinvest. And staying now with the business model, if we go back to your, to the core business model at Avis, I mean, again, how you make money, you have said also that cross-border workers are essential to your business, that without them, they wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. I think immigration and cross-border worker are essential to our economy in Switzerland. Mm. Switzerland is a small country. Uh, not everybody is doing a kid every 10 years like I do. So <laughs> we have to have <laughs> external uh, yes. in, in contribution if we want to grow. Yes. And so, uh, of course, the region like Geneva, Basel, uh, the Tessin uh, are mm -hmm. a really active uh, region. Mm -hmm. uh, they have cross-border activity and there is a lot of cross-border workers, which are essential, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this whole, uh, these a bit mounting tensions with the EU regarding the free movement of people now in Switzerland, does that, are you losing sleep? Because that threatens your livelihood then. I mean, we have the, um, the EU uh, free moving people only since 2002. So uh, Switzerland has managed uh, 700 years before to live without this. Okay, I mean, so you're not so concerned as well. I'm not, I'm not concerned. I'm, I mean, we cannot live without the EU and the EU cannot live without us. It's like for the Brexit, I think. 
what Brexit, mm -hmm. hard Brexit, soft Brexit. Uh, it will, I mean, England will be there uh, anyway uh, the next <laughs> ten centuries. So, and they they will they will try, but they will make some uh, exchange with the EU anyway. Mm. And if there is taxes, then you have different prices, and then you have to manage that. But mm -hmm. it's manageable. Yes, but if there's no agreement, no agreement. Is... No agreement means taxes. Mm. That's that's uh, mainly. Uh, but uh, before EU, we were able to hire people from everywhere in the world. Mm. With the EU, it became much more difficult to hire people from Canada or, or, but it was or the more US. Difficult. But it was more difficult. No, it's now more difficult because it's it's more easy to have EU people coming to Switzerland. I said, yes, so in the past. They tightened the external circle to uh, in, in favor of, of the EU. But, I mean, Switzerland can work also with, uh, without that. Can work without. The yeah. EU. Okay. I mean, we don't have to give up everything to have that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's good if you had, if you have a good agreement, mm -hmm. but but if, if it's a, a single-sided agreement, and uh, we have to get rid of all our advantage mm -hmm. to have that, that's not, not. I think we have to be tough in the negotiation. But the EU, of course, can always retaliate, right? I mean, we could lose stock market equivalency in six months. Yeah, five months so. now. But it's okay. <laughs> you think Switzerland can ride it out? Can ride out the. I think Victor Inox will still uh, sell uh, mm -hmm. his knife everywhere in the world because they have a, a good quality. We have to focus on, quali uh, on quality. I don't think that the, the, the Swiss franc strength is a problem. Uh, the problem is if you don't provide a quality, prob uh, a quality product, then you, you're not able to, to sell it. Mm -hmm. But remember, when the pound was at 2.5 francs, uh, I mean, Swiss were still going to London. Uh, mm -hmm. That was not a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I never saw somebody saying, I'm not going to London because the pound is too high. Right. So, I mean, but of, of course, if you come to Switzerland and you have the Swiss francs strong, mm -hmm. plus you have a very poor service, then you go elsewhere. And that's the yes. problem of the Swiss tourism. We're providing very poor service. Mm. And uh, we blame the Swiss franc. Mm -hmm. Which, as you have said also, is a, an excuse for mediocrity. I think so. <laughs> All right, I want to come back to Avis now, quickly. Um, shareholders. Interesting, so you, at least according to last year's annual report, are Majority shareholder, more than 70% of the shares are yours. Um, and but... Michel Rebier. And? And Michel Rebier. We're, oh. we're two shareholders, Michel Rebier okay. and I. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. And then you brought in, also interestingly, Kuwait Investment Office. They're your second largest shareholder with almost 3.5%. And I'm, I'm curious, I mean, why not? China or Saudi Arabia? I mean, KIO is, a, is an inheritance from Victoria Jungfrau. When we bought, they were 24% they were shareholder at Victoria Jungfrau Collection. Mm -hmm. So when we merged with Victoria uh, Jungfrau Collection, they became shareholder in Avis. So it's a legacy. Ah, OK. But they're okay. still very happy with their investment, so. Yeah, what, I was wondering also what's in it for them, but. Obviously, an older relationship. Yeah, so they came through Victoria. They were shareholder of Victoria Jungfrau, and when we merged, they, they came in. And will they stay? Yeah, they stood. They, it was in 2014. They stayed, and uh, mm -hmm. they they are not acting as uh, they want to leave. No, I think they're they are happy with their investment. All right. Well, this is Yen and Money. So your stock price has been flat uh, for the last two years. What's going on there? Yeah, we had a big uh, jump in, um, I think it was in 16, um, after acquiring uh, a lot of uh, clinic within a short period. Uh, then we have uh, a little bit to digest all mm -hmm. this uh, investment, mm -hmm. uh, new clinic. You have to urbanize all the process. You have to, and uh, we will be able to reapse the benefit uh, in 19 and 20. So. Um, I think I, I see that as a as a step, uh, but uh, the value uh, in Avis uh, we're creating value every day. I mean, uh, 
we are now um, spinning off the, the real estate and we've proven by uh, selling 20% of this company that mm. real estate has a, a, is a real asset with real value. Mm. So the, the, this, this will uh, give Avis uh, more flexibility uh, on the financial side to make more acquisition. Getting back to your comment on having recently been in California, in Silicon Valley, you also have a kind of tech side to yourself, I, as I've gathered. You even launched an app um, that I'm aware of. Um, what was your takeaway from Silicon Valley from your trip? So I went there because, you know, every year in January, there is the JP Morgan uh, healthcare conference. So uh, every CEO um, of healthcare company in the world are gathering there in mm -hmm. San Francisco. I also took the opportunity to visit Kaiser Permanente mm -hmm. and uh, Sutter Health, which are two uh, major players in, in uh, West Coast uh, healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, Kaiser Permanente is really uh, an example of integrated mm -hmm. care from the beginning in 1930. They have been providing healthcare plan right. together with uh, healthcare services, and uh, it works. They have definitely better outcome than the other. So I think that could be an example to to set up such a system here. All right. So that that was the takeaway. But I assume you also got to see what Apple and Google are up to. Yeah, of course. No, I'm a, in terms I'm a, of the future of health. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Apple uh, in the healthcare. Uh, in the <laughs> I think healthcare. you're wearing an Apple watch even, no? <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and, and to me, it's not, a, it's not a watch. So I was not using watches to know the time uh -huh. since long. So when you want to, to know the time, you look at your uh, smartphone, or right. but you never watch uh, your watch. So, uh, so this is to for me, healthcare. it's a medical for... device. Yeah, it's okay. a monitoring device, and I think okay. it's very interesting to monitor uh, all your parameter. Mm -hmm. So sleeping uh, and movement. Exactly, and... Mm -hmm. and that will give us uh, a lot of uh, of uh, advantage and information in the future. So, uh, I think for now we have uh, not enough history mm -hmm. in uh, in all those system. But we will be soon uh, able to have brand new solution emerging from this uh, data analysis. Okay. And I think Apple will be uh, really, uh, a really important player because they're not using the data as a good, as a commercial good. So they're mm -hmm. not selling the data. Mm -hmm. They're just using the data to uh, provide a better mm -hmm. service to their customers. So they will use all the healthcare data that they gather to, to discover new treatment and to then give it back to the to their customer. And where did you find that Switzerland was on this landscape? Um, I, I don't know. They, they, they will still be eight million people in Switzerland. So uh, those are people. We're not, will... Are we on the forefront, or or still lagging, or where? No, I think Switzerland can be at the forefront because it's a small country. So, and, and, and you know that Apple has uh, one of the highest market share in Switzerland. So mm -hmm. it shows that uh, already the Swiss people are equipped with Apple devices, so mm -hmm. they will be able to gather this data and use this data. So I, I don't think Switzerland... Uh, I think Switzerland can pay... could play a, a very important role uh, if uh, we do not come with too complicated and heavy regulation. That's mm. the problem. Uh, that I have to move uh, freely. And so if you really want that all data remain in Switzerland, that's mm. going to be difficult. Thank you so much for your insights today, Antoine, and for being on The Newsmaker. It was a pleasure. Pleasure is mine and thank you very much.